I, have, I guess we have uh, uh, Mr. Nkwankwa on the line. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Tata, for the opportunity and good afternoon to the listeners. Yes, uh, thank you so much for making time. Uh, we've been getting reaction from uh, you know, other political parties about uh, the incident that happened at Vets University today. But let, let's just get your perspective regarding, uh, well, with hindsight, the government should have really stepped in to address the issue of funding for education because it's now frustrating the the epicenter of uh, protest in as far as Vets University is concerned? Well, government is to blame for what is happening at Vets University. We would like to believe as a party that what's happening there is not an isolated incident. It is what we should expect to happen from other universities around the country if we continue to have an uncaring government that continues. Even last year, we're among the few political parties who complained about the fact that a lot of money was, ring, uh, was, was being redirected, taken away from higher education institutions to other priorities of government at, at the time. We accepted because, uh, because we had, the country was on lockdown during COVID-19 that those adjustments would be made, but we expected that government then would sort out funding issues for higher education. We have a government that made a commitment as far back as 2017 that it was going to make free, free higher education possible for students. We have a government that has not listened enough with students. For example, they apply and they accept it in universities, but they do not get NSF funding in order for them to be able to register and continue their studies. And at times, you, you understand the frustration of students because what happened is they, this, 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 this indecision, this lack of uh, paying enough respect and uh, paying enough attention to the question of funding for our education institutions always puts the management of our education institutions and students at loggerheads. They're always fighting about the issue of uh, inadequate, uh, inadequate funding while the government is actually sitting back and twiddling its thumbs. Up until there's decisive leadership on this question, up until we start prioritizing SAA at the expense of higher education, which is an important investment for the future, we are going to continue to encounter these challenges. It is as if the country is being run by a government that does not understand the plight of the poor. We are all poor. We are all from previous disadvantaged backgrounds. We should understand the frustration and the anger of the students. Yes, we condemn violence. We don't want violence. But at times, the South African government has created a situation where uh, it seems like violence is the only language they understand. If people go to boardrooms, if people want to write letters, they get ignored. The minute they burn tires, they block streets, then they get attention. And they get it, whatever it is that they wanted from government. And we should change that culture. But no one should underestimate the frustration of students who go, whose applications have been accepted, who go to universities because they want to further their studies. They get there, they are not able to access the necessary resources in order for them to be able to make that realizable. How should the problem be solved now before it gets out of hand further than this? Well, it needs a decisive leadership from government. Firstly, even the Minister of Higher Education must not wait until there's a protest in another university before they stand up. I know there was an unnecessary loss of life which happened today, and we should express our condolences to the family. But these things are, not, uh, are avoidable. But the other issue is I do not understand why it's easy for the South African police, even when, especially when protesters are black, to fire them with the happened in Senegal and many other parts of the country where it was different people of a different color, white in particular, they don't even shoot with rubber bullets. They actually throw kisses at them and understand. In Senegal, you had pol the police while the other race group were being violent, were retreating all the time. It's a problem that whenever black people are protesting, that the first thing that police use is violence, rubber bullets, because politicians are not at the front line of resolving political problems that need political solutions. You are not going to solve the, the higher education, the inadequate funding problem of higher education by securitizing the problem. It needs leaders to go and engage with student leaders about issues that, uh, that affect them. It needs leaders to understand what we need to do as a country in order to address the funding challenges in, a, in our higher, higher education institutions. It needs lead, leaders to understand that when we take funding away from, from higher education institutions, we are calling for protest in January when we don't have money. But it also makes it worse when you have NSS that is always chaotic. I think irregular expenditure 
uh, amounted to 500 billion rand when we need that funding, for example, to be able to fund higher education institutions. It's a leadership question. The Minister of Edu Higher Education, the president of the country, also needs to, to make his voice heard about this issue before it gets out of hand. Do you think that the VETS uh, university management is being incalcitrant when it comes to student engagement by just saying that they will be financially unsustainable? I mean, like uh, with the question that was coming, that who do they ex expect to be financially sustainable after what the country and the whole world has been through? Uh, shouldn't there be a special arrangement for students who don't have money to register so that they can at least go to school with those special arrangements and then the problems of funding will be resolved at a later stage? The, the reason why the uh, university, without sounding like I'm their spokesperson, is because the government lacks credibility even on the promises that it makes. I want to give you an example. You had one of the industries which carried, carried the country around during uh, the lockdown period, the taxi industry, they were promised 5 billion rents. They, they, they received that 5 billion rents. Say, for example, tomorrow we're to go on a hard lockdown. Do you think they would comply with the 70% uh, regulations that they were required or half the trip? They will not, because why? Whatever was promised to them was never delivered. I suspect that it's because of a a credibility deficit problem that you have where government would make commitments to institutions of higher learning, say do this, we'll avail funding, and when the time is, comes for them to do so, they do not do it. I'm sure what we would require is not a, 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 a flimsy commitment that is made on a platform by, say, a minister addressing a gathering. What they would want it in black and white, where you have treasury committing to avail funding for higher education institutions in order for these institutions to be able to do what they require. So going forward, sir, what, what should happen in the meantime for students who are now frustrated? And as you and I can see that they will have none of it, that they don't want to sit at home and do nothing after what had happened last year. So now for 2021, they want to get back into academic action. It needs political leadership. It needs all the stakeholders, the university management, government, students, all the relevant stakeholders need to sit around the table and to come up, map up a solution for this problem so that it doesn't recur. We need to solve it once and for all so that we don't sit with this problem every time we, we uh, there's a new academic year. We always sit with this problem because what we do is we decide to paper over the cracks instead of addressing the fundamental and the underlying issues. If there's a discussion that needs to be had about saying National Treasury reallocating or reallocating resources from some line functions or some budget items to the education, higher education sector, then we must do that. If there's a need for South Africa to introduce tax, a little bit of tax, for example, in order for us to be able to contribute to a pass, public pass in terms of being able to fund free, free higher education, then we must do that. We must look at all the models, all the modalities, all the proposals that were made when we had the fees must fall protests around the country, some of which, or if not most of which, uh, have never seen the light of day. We need to go back to the drawing board again. Thank you for making time to speak to us, sir. Much obliged to you. Thank you, sir. Mbaba Yomzi Mkwankwa, UDM MP, speaking to us about uh, the current uh, funding problems at Vets University. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Don't go away.